Thank you and good afternoon. This is Sam Vaughn for Sam Sports Report. In the Royals talk about stadiums and Chiefs talk about stadiums. We've talked about this before, but this time we're going to get into a different way. We're going to talk about it different because of the Jaguars. In Kansas City, the vote field in Jackson County on April 2nd, more than a month ago. Now it's back to the drawing board, and one of their options may be for the Royals to move the stadium downtown but closer to the Negro League to try it again. But it needs to be in a safe place for the fans and for the team. As for the Chiefs, and the Royals and Chiefs will go on their own to build a new stadium, looks like, this time. And it wouldn't shock me if the Kansas City Chiefs move to Kansas. The Chiefs and Arrowhead played probably 20 more years if they didn't if they did get a done deal done with Jackson Jackson County but if they don't get a deal done with or Kansas residents still have to pay for the vote but they won't get a vote on it because in Kansas they have a star vote which means that you don't have to have they don't have to have the vote from the community but they do have to have the money and, but it doesn't seem like I would want to go into much of a farm community if I were the Chiefs, but as a team, you want the best stadium you can build. And so if the Chiefs need that to, to avoid, to for them to be happy, I'm all for it. I'm not so sure if the Chiefs built that they would get the team, but I do think they have an advantage over far as the tax plan. As we just said, the community can doesn't have to vote for it. Just the government has to vote for it, and the Chiefs can be in Kansas. So they can put the money forth it easier as far as they vote. But will Kansas City Kansas be able to put it together? According to Clark Hunt, the Chiefs and the Royals will go separate and stand alone in the vote. The Royals will have themselves on another vote. Here's more with that from the Jacksonville Jaguars example. Perhaps to finally off the plan to pay for the Jaguars stadium of the future. The team and the city of Jacksonville laid out the numbers for the first time publicly last night. The total project at a cost of $1.4 billion. That was not a surprise. Good morning. Taxpayers would potentially be on the hook for half of that, while some argue the city is actually paying slightly more than the Jaguars. So we are told this plan will not include any new taxes and will keep the team in town for the next generation. This is still far from a done deal, though. News for Jack's reporter Ashley Harding is joining us now live. Ashley, the community will have several opportunities to learn more about this plan and also provide feedback. And they certainly will, Jen and Bruce. You know, tonight is the first of five community huddles where people can go and get their questions answered. And Mayor Donna Deegan's going to be there. The city's lead negotiator is going to be there, along with Jaguars President Mark Lamping. I'll step out of the way and just show you a look at the stadium this morning. This is how we're used to seeing it. Now, there is still a long way to go. But if there is final approval, the stadium, as we know it, will look completely different. Now, the city's $625 million portion will be factored into the annual budget across the next four years and will not include a tax increase, as we mentioned. The city also agreed to pay $150 million for maintenance and also upkeep. That would bring Jacksonville's total investment to $775 million. Now, that extra $150 million is notable because it actually tilts the actual percentages to the side of the city and how it's presented at the NFL owners' meetings. A new stadium deal requires 75% of NFL owners to approve. Now, we heard from both Mayor Donna Deegan and also City Council President Ron Salem after the presentation. It was such a shot in the arm for the city uh, to believe and to know that we could actually land this deal. Um, it is with great pride that we're in an NFL city. It, it means a lot to this community. It's a rallying point for Jacksonville. And while nobody wants to spend a lot of money, uh, the truth is, this was a binary choice. We can build a stadium or, or we could lose our team. And that's not going to happen on my watch. I would love to finish this during my term as president, but most importantly, we need to make sure the council is comfortable with all the provisions in the agreement and get all the questions answered. And hopefully we can accomplish both by meeting uh, two to three days a week uh, for three or four weeks. 
But not everyone is on board with the plan as presented. Councilman Rory Diamond, whose district includes the Beaches Road on X, we got the deal, and over the last year, Mayor Deegan hasn't negotiated anything new for this stadium lease other than to add another $150 million of additional city spending on non-stadium programs. That's a non-starter, and the council will remove it. We are where we were last year. Now, anyone who has those questions can attend those community huddles. The first, as I mentioned, is tonight at Mandarin High School. The address is 4831 Greenland Road. It is tonight from 6 to 7.30. It is free and open to the public. You do not have to register register beforehand. The next one is scheduled for tomorrow. We have all that information on our website, newsforjacks.com. But again, this is still far from being a done deal. The city council and the NFL owners still have to sign off on this plan. Once again, we have a full breakdown on newsforjacks.com. Reporting live this morning, Ashley Harding, Channel 4, the local station. We're already seeing a strong response to the proposed stadium deal. Dozens of insiders commented on this story on newsforjax.com. So the vast majority of the responses we've received are against paying for the renovations. NEPA writes this needs to be put on a ballot. Let the people of Jacksonville vote. Another insider writes, I'm sure there is some gullible city like Jacksonville which would be delighted to have the Jaguars and build them a fabulous stadium. There's also this, that money is better spent elsewhere, not the stadium. Jags have been here 30 plus years and haven't had a positive impact on the city. And finally, Jaxby writes, I'm in favor of sports teams, but lament that it's always at the expense of providing more broad-based support for the local community. Khan should pay more. The score of their game today was Pirates took it 9-3. The Cubs have now lost three out of the last four. The Royals lead the A's 1-0 bottom of the second. And the Boston Red Sox and the St. Louis Cardinals will play tonight. Brian Bello will go for the Red Sox, and Kyle Gibson will go for the Cardinals. First pitch, 7-15. And in the NHL, the, the Panthers are going for the to win game six and go to the conference finals in hockey. But the Bruins lead the Panthers one to nothing. Second quarter. Tonight will be the Stars and the Avalanche. Jason Roberts will be the player to watch out for, and so will Nathan McKinnon. Faceoff for that game is at 9 o'clock. In the NBA, it will be the Knicks and the Pacers tonight at 7.30. The Knicks come in at 50-32. and 32. The Pacers are 47-32, 7.30 ESPN. Indianapolis is favored by 5.5, the home team. But the Knicks lead the series 3-2. Players to watch out for, Jalen Brunson and Tracy Hilberton. We'll see who wins that game. The Knicks try to go to the NBA Finals for the first time since 2000. And in the NFL, we had schedules released yesterday. We'll get more into that this weekend. The car of the Kansas City Chiefs, Xavier Worthy, was stolen. A sports person with the Kansas City Chiefs told the Kansas City Star the car was reported stolen noon Monday. Worthy was not with the vehicle, and it was Worthy was selected as the last player by the Chiefs in the first round. He set the record for a 40-yard dash, 4.21. The Chiefs begin their off-season practices next week. This is Sam Vaughn for Sam Sports Report. I'm Harrison Graham. It is the Chiefs report by Chat Sports. Let's break down the entire Chiefs schedule. We'll go rapid fire at first, all 17 games, and then we'll kind of go one by one, take it a little slower. Week one, week two, we already knew those. Ravens to kick things off to open things on Thursday night. Bengals come to town in week two. Then you got another primetime game against Atlanta in week three. Week four at the Chargers before Monday Night Football in week five. Saints come to town. You got a week six bye at San Francisco. That's 49ers uh, Chiefs Super Bowl rematch there. Should be a fun one. Week eight at the Raiders. Week nine, another primetimer. Monday night again against Tampa Bay. Week 10 against Denver at home. Week 11 at Buffalo, one of the highly anticipated games of the year. 
Week 12 at Carolina. Black Friday action, Chiefs Raiders in Week 13 at Arrowhead. Week 14, another prime timer against the Chargers on Sunday Night Football. Week 15 at the Browns. Week 16, Texans come to town. Should be a good one. Week 17 at the Steelers on Christmas Day. That'll be on Netflix. And then week 18 against the Denver Broncos in Denver.